Hey guys, this is Lyret, and today we will recap the GLOW material for the Unreal Engine 4. Uh, since the previous video was viewed and commented by a lot of people, I got some advice from uh, the viewers, and specifically the guy with the, or girl with the nick name that I will uh, show in a minute, uh, helped a lot. And now we will be able to develop more economic and smooth solution for the GLOW uh, that we want to achieve. So we will remake the GLOW and make it more uh, more lightweight for the engine and it will generally look good. So let's create a new material. I already made a folder in my project and we will call this GLOW enhanced for example. Yeah, Let's open it. There you go. Uh, I use this kind of layout, sorry for that, uh, because I have bigger screen and this is not the biggest screen I'm shooting the video on. But this screen has 16 by, uh, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so I thought it would be comfortable for you guys. Okay, let's go ahead and start straight off. First of all, we will not be using any textures whatsoever. We, this is nice. And the person who, who gave advice how to create this kind of uh, version of glow material is Aleftina Puvian or whatever. I cannot, sorry, I cannot pronounce it properly. <laughs> so we will be making the Neutron material. Let's see. Uh, first of all, we will need a texture coordinate. So let's just put it here. Okay, now um, let me just make this one a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's mask these. So Because if we, if we extend this guy, uh, we will see not much right now, but I hope it will compile in a while. Let's mask this by let's mask this by G, for example. So component mask by G doesn't really matter. And again, let's extend this so you guys will more or less understand what I'm doing. Move this a little bit here and copy this, paste here, and mask this by R. So we switch the channel. And in a minute it will show what, what's there. I don't know why it's compiling so slow. It, it cannot be this hardware problem. Okay, so what do we mask? Let's multiply this to get it more... Uh, uh, more contrasting gradients. Multiply by 0 0.5. And copy note, paste note here. So you can start to see the result here. Um, and yeah, let's also extend this guy. Let, let me put it here because it will be easier for you to see more space. And let's just close the stats. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this doesn't look like this. Uh, for some reason it's not compiled yet. I think because I record using the CPU codec, but never mind that. So let, now let's add a sign there. Um, the period can be left one, no problem there. Control C, Control V. Okay. Now, um, when we get to this point, we will have this kind of uh, distribution of of the color among the surface. You will you will see it in a minute. Or well, I I can wait and let you see this, or I can move on. So let's move on. Uh, the distribution will be so that uh, the white area will be in the center and the blacks will be going here to the edges and here it will be the same but because we took different channel we get distribution on different uh, axes so let's just what we have to do is we use one minus this operation and let's again extend this paste here I can show you why it doesn't display I'll just call my uh, Task Manager, you will see that I have 100% CPU load, which is really sad. <laughs> Not 100, but 70 or 80%, but it's a lot. Yeah, you can see here. Now we uh, one minus it, and now we have blacks here and whites in the border. And this is fine, but of course, what we really need is a lot of whites just in the border, just in, in you know the edges. So let's put a power there. Power, and we want to play with this a little bit, so just put these guys a 
little bit maybe aside because I want to play and you know be able to change it let's add a scalar parameter I, I would call it edge sharpness but you know whatever whatever you think is proper here and by default let's put there like 30 not a big deal the thing is when you when you add scalar parameters to the material then you will be able to experiment with it later in the uh, material instance editor so you might get it wrong in the first place but experimenting here in this editor is pretty pretty uh, expensive in terms of time because it recompiles everything every time so uh, now let's take a base in this expo exponent exponent and then base from here and again in this in this exponent potential value here move it a little bit to the side now we have two channels so basically two borders and then uh, what we can do is if we're not satisfied with the result we can subtract more to get sharper or sharper borders or just the opposite of this uh, the bigger ones uh, so let's add subtract node there subtract here we go and subtraction again is a scalar parameter that we will want to experiment with. I will show you later what you can do with it. So this will be edge sub subtraction. That's how I call it. You can call it differently. And the good value there is something like 0.1 for me. Again, we'll be able to experiment later on. Control C, Control V. Put this one here. And from each of these, you just subtract this one. Okay. Let's move again to the left. Now, when we have these going for us, what we want to do is we want to uh, linearly interpolate between these two. Then this is this is a static operation here. We do it not in real time, but just one time when we compile. Or not not when when we compile, of course. But uh, all of these parameters they are they are static. Nothing nothing is changing. So this will always look the same. Okay. So then. You want to multiply this by color, which is oops, sorry, which is your color of your um, material that you want there. The edge is color, so again we will put there like a vector parameter, I think, and this will be just color. And by default, let's add something like like this. Okay, just add here, and then. At the end, let's multiply this by glow. Again, scalar parameter, glow strength, and let's put our output there like 30 again. It's up to you, of course. And it's emissive. And yes, here we go. Now, while this is compiling, I will show you something. If we go here, window, stats. Let's put this one here, I think. Look at this. Zero texture samples, 46 slight instructions. Great. So let's save this material. Let's hope I don't get any uh, crashes here. Okay. So really quickly we create material in Snoops. Yes, okay, it works. <laughs> now, now we can play. So cool things here. Of course you can change color, but that's not a big deal. Uh, glow strength works as you would imagine, but now we get more subtraction, we get more uh, resharped edges, and they always have this this smooth triangle with rounded edges, which which is nice. Again, if you don't like this, well, you will have to find a different algorithm. But the cool thing about this is that uh, you can add more. Let me see if I can do it properly. Yeah. Uh, if you play with these parameters, you can get this kind of nice effect. So this is totally different material here. Of course, if you put it here on the on the sphere, it will work totally wrong. But uh, the point here is that um, this is much cheaper version of the glow material. And let's just go back with all the parameters here. Maybe here even 50, like that, and. This one looks significantly better, I think, and it, the quality doesn't degrade because it's there are no no uh, textures used. It's all of a, it's all about um, just you know calculating stuff 
on a fly and getting the images from there. So uh, thank you, Aleph Tina PVN. Uh, sorry if I pronounce your, your nickname wrong. And this is the first part of the tutorial. In the second part, I will show you how to create a really, really uh, simple cycling of the colors. Uh, so we will go through most of the colors when it will be cycling. It will be cycling all in in a, in a material code, so you won't, you won't need any blueprint to do this. And thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. And please like, subscribe, and yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.